Well, here I am back again for the last time. So <laughs> it's been um, quite an honor to be here and to be a speaker at the conference. And so uh, I will say that as I begin. Um, what I'm going to do, this is kind of an introduction to this section. Um, I will be giving kind of an overview, again, as I have done with uh, my other presentations, on how we use some of the materials that we develop by the association so that practitioners can have them to use when they're out practicing uh, with the various forms of life cycle. Uh, the next two speakers, one will talk about maternal uh, and infant uh, life cycle issues, and the second speaker will speak about aging. We would have had to have a whole conference if we were going to talk about every section of life style. So uh, here we go. Nutrition in the life cycle is uh, something that individuals uh, deal with through birth to old age. So we sometimes as dietitians forget that if we have taught a child about nutrition, that that nutrition knowledge might have to be altered as they become a teenager, as they become an adult, and then as they age in their adult years. So we can't ever think that we have taught a patient and they will know nutrition for the rest of their lives because of the one time we have seen them. So we must need to remember that all of the stages uh, throughout life have different nutrition issues and uh, we need to make sure that we provide the right information for the stage in the life cycle that uh, the people are at. Often we find that children are some of the best teachers as we begin to teach nutrition for families. We teach it to children and then they take it home and they become uh, very inquisitive of their parents about what they're eating and uh, are, why aren't you doing what we learned in school? So uh, children can help you uh, with uh, the whole issue of, of nutrition throughout the life cycle. How do we begin to develop what we're going to say? Well, once again, you're hearing the same words, that we need to look at the science-based knowledge that we have that will help individuals create their personal diet plan. Remember when you're teaching nutrition, you've heard this throughout the last two days, the patient is the one doing the eating. You aren't. So you can do this great meal plan or great diet that you think is really good. They look at it and go, I don't want to do any of this. What is this person talking about? I'm ignoring it. So make sure that your patient is involved as you're developing their personal diet plan. There is a lot of science when you talk about the life cycle. This is something you've got books on each section. We have before they're born, after they're born, while they're growing up, while they're teenagers, while they're adults. Once you get to adulthood, there's all different kinds of things. So make sure that you know that you have to look for the science. You can't remember all that science all the time, but you need to know where the resources are so that you can find where your patient is within the life cycle and then apply that knowledge base that is there. And then the important part is, once you've looked at the science and used it, can you, and this is really the dietitian's job, can you take the scientific information and make it practical and understanding so that what you know as an accomplished dietitian who's gone through much schooling will be understood by a five-year-old who is just learning to read. And if you think your science is going to be of interest to a five-year-old, probably not. So you have to come up with practical ways of taking all that data and making it fun and exciting for a five-year-old. I think you should get into game development. That's probably where they're at. 
what the association can do, and associations, all of the ones that are working in these areas, they provide a form for how do we begin to develop some of the guidelines we need. This slide we've actually been through already in some of our earlier discussions yesterday, that we use our professional uh, evidence and what we look at is what is the question we need to have answered, how do we get to the literature and review it, analyze it, create a summary, and then establish a guideline, and then release the information for application and practice. This is one of the things we do uh, as an association for our members. We begin to look at some of uh, the various issues, and many of them around the life cycle. And then we have a process that we do this where all the professionals can come together, be part of this process to establish the guideline so that other, everybody then can use that guideline when they're trying to uh, look at the literature. That's always the hard part because there's so much literature uh, to look at. Once we have all that information and, and science and we look around, how do we begin to put that into our education systems? One, we use it when we're developing the educational competencies. I'm sure all of you have taken a class or two on nutrition for children, nutrition for aging, nutrition for uh, adults in various uh, uh, disease states. So that's part of the educational competencies and they've used that science to do that. Also, make sure that your instructional materials are based on the science. It's not something where well, you think this is a good idea. So make sure that you're not giving out information that you don't have some science to back it up. A lot of times we um, forget that uh, our instructional materials should also make sure they're linked back to the science. Public information sheets, these again, we have to write them very simply. We know that the public usually doesn't have a very high reading level in every country. Uh, uh, it, it's usually something, so the simpler you can make it, the more attractive you can make it, this is great. Do we keep also our science when we're developing our media messages and also all of our public policies, positions, and protocols? Some of the evidence-based guidelines that we have done at the Academy for the various uh, uh, life cycle uh, areas. We've done one on pediatric weight management. So this is a guideline on how do you help a child who has weight issues. Um, the word obesity uh, we don't use as much. We use weight management because what is uh, the correct weight for one person might be different for another and somehow the w a word obesity has a bad stigma especially with children. So you don't want them to feel bad about themselves. Uh, so you, we have learned to use weight management and that they have the appropriate weight management rather than, than using a word that doesn't have a very good implication. And so our guideline is called that. We have one for adults in the on area of oncology. We have also uh, ones for adults in the area of chronic uh, kidney disease, as you have heard uh, in the last couple of days. We also have one on unintended weight loss in older adults, and that is one where you begin to become more senior, um, and you might have weight loss issues that come about because of age, and I think uh, we just heard some of those from Jesse about uh, they, they don't eat as regularly sometimes as they get older and that kind of thing. And then we just have a broad one on food and nutrition for older adults in helping them promote wellness. We tend to talk to about adults when they're sick, uh, but we also want to help adults stay healthy and well. So we, we used uh, our science and guidelines in the life cycle to develop one in this area. As our population in the United States has, is growing older, um, not every country has that, but uh, we definitely know that um, we are going to have more senior people than we're going to have younger. So we have begun to put some emphasis on making sure we have guidelines and information available to that population, which is going to double and triple in the next uh, few years for us. By the way, that's a worldwide issue. I think the, in most countries, the, they're getting older than they are getting younger. Um, there are a few where they, they have, it's a younger population. 
So here's some of the sample of how we've used uh, that science-based uh, information and applied it uh, for the life cycle in some of the things we have available for our members to use. And these are all things that can be accessed or purchased and that kind of thing um, by our members if they want to have it. We have a National Nutrition Care Manual. What that is, um, you might have a diet manual in your hospital. Um, it, one time in our country, every hospital had its own diet manual. They, they all used whatever they developed by their doctors and their medical team and their dietitians in their community. Over the years as we progressed, people wanted more national standard. So then some of the big hospital groups we have, uh, hospitals, we have a big chain of hospitals for our veterans. So there's the Veterans Administration Hospitals. We have some private um, chain of hospitals that, and private feeding contract. So they all formed uh, their diet manuals and used them in their facilities. But there still was a cry that they should be a national um, manual that all dietitians could go to. And so we do have a nutrition care manual. It is updated on an annual basis as new science comes out. It's online. We went, it used to be a paper, big, big, fat book. <laughs> and carrying that around <laughs> was always a challenge. <clears throat> but now it's all online. It can be accessed online. So once uh, they subscribe to it, uh, they can take it around in their hospital and have it with them, and it covers all, all kinds of areas of the life cycle. But we have in our country a lot of children's hospitals. So the dietitians working there wanted to have their, kind of just to have the stuff for children because th their manual, they didn't need all that stuff for the older. So, so we then developed the same kind of thing, a pediatric nutrition manual. It's not mandatory that they use this. It is their choice to use this nutrition manual, but many of the uh, dietitians have taken it to their hospitals and it's been adopted, mainly because we say as the academy, we're going to update it every year, we're gonna look at the new science, we're gonna change things. So many um, of the hospitals have adapted this. We do have an accreditation standard for our hospitals, the, the body that comes around to make sure the hospitals are doing their work appropriately. One of their requirements is they must have an updated nutrition manual. And so they're always looking at the date of the manual. So now with this electronic one, that is an easier recommend, uh, recommendation to follow um, than it was in the past. We also have a series of position papers for the organization. I mentioned one earlier. This one I put in this section because it's one that's called the quality of life for older adults that can be enhanced by less restrictive, more individualized diets. Um, this particular paper is based on some of science and literature. And we began to see, especially with our older adults who might be living in an institutional environment, that we were giving them all kinds of restrictions to their diets. As you get older, if you've lived to be 90, you maybe don't need as many as restrictions as you needed at 50, if you made it that far. So how do you begin to look at that patient and um, say, you know, maybe the science says it's okay if we lighten up those restrictions. Uh, so that's what this paper is about and is available to anybody that goes to our website. Uh, it can easily uh, be downloaded and you can get that paper. Also, we have uh, some practice uh, standards and assessments in the life cycle area. <clears throat> We've worked with the Commission on Cancer and they just recently um, revised their standards. And this is one of our big accomplishments because we had done some work in the evidence-based uh, applications for adults with oncology, they have now added registered dietitians into the criteria for our cancer institutions in our country. We were never written into the standard, so they now have to have a dietitian on, on their staffs. And before, most of them did, but it wasn't a requirement. Now we're a requirement, and it's because we had looked at that adult population for that specific 
uh, uh, center. And so it's, there was one of the advantages of doing that as a group. And lastly, our nutrition fact sheets for the public. We have all kinds, there, we have them for kids, we have them for adults. Uh, I picked up one called Everyday Eating for a Healthier You, but we have them. We try to also focus on teens. Some of the feedback we got uh, from our teen population was that everybody talks about children, you know, the health of children. Well, teenagers don't think they're kids. They don't think they're children anymore, and they go, there's never anything for us. No one ever writes about teenagers and what we need to do as teenagers. So we're trying to look at that issue a little bit and, and put some things and emphasize them. They get tired of looking at all those small children and all the brochures and that. So that's something you might think about in your country too. What is available for that population? And they're really at a, sometimes a growth. Their bodies are changing. There's a lot going on in that population that sometimes they kind of get ignored between uh, being a child and, and being an um, adult. They're not quite adults yet. <laughs> so in Nutrition in the Life Cycle, I am taking us back to lifelong learning. And, and um, really, in this discussion, it has two meanings. We have talked about lifelong learning for dietitians all week. But in a sense, it's lifelong learning um, in the life cycle for two reasons. The nutrition needs of individuals change, as I mentioned, throughout their whole life cycle. So we want to make sure that they um, know what those are, that we know what they are, that we're giving the appropriate information throughout the life cycle. And also for you then, it becomes ongoing learning. If you're working with children and all of a sudden you change jobs and you're working with adults, well, you maybe want to have to go back to the literature and relook at things. You probably can't use all of the same advice. There are some big general nutrition principles, but overall, you probably need to alter those. So your lifelong learning is an ongoing process that you need to pursue and understand what new science comes out for each of these. Remember I said at the beginning, there's a large body of science for the life cycle. So each of those sections is changing all the time. So you think, okay, I know everything about pediatrics. I'm up to date, I know everything. I'm gonna go, all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of new literature that comes out. So it's, it's and you have that over all these different parts of the life cycle. And then how they impact the individuals. So in a sense, lifelong learning is not only something you need to do as a dietitian, you need to do it for your patients, and your patients need to do it. So it's an ongoing process, really, for everyone about that. Now I need my helper, and um, uh, Daniel? <laughs> I don't know that I can get there. Monica, do you know how to get to the... Do you know how to get to the next program? Okay. He's gonna, we're gonna see, by the way, we're gonna see a little video. I've been trying to use a little different AV, but yeah, no, no, no more exercise. <laughs> but I'm gonna show a little video and um, it kind of addresses some life cycle uh, things. All of the people in the video are members of the academy, uh, just like Bethany on, on the first one. This is a variety of different members of our association who are talking about uh, the importance of nutrition in, in the life cycle. And again, we've done it just as a, an information piece uh, that's available on our website. I actually love food, uh, and I think it would be kind of tough to be in this profession if you didn't get the science. Well, the art together, that's what's so unique about being a registered dietitian, is how you convey all this technical jargon and mumbo jumbo into everyday terms that people can put their teeth into as well. Registered dietitian is going to change your life. We base our counseling on science. A lot of people out there claiming to be nutrition experts, but the registered dietitian is the one that's acknowledged to be the expert in food and nutrition. Many times the 
science that is used to provide people with information on nutrition can be confusing. And so dietitians are trained in how to take that information and personalize it and customize it for a individual or a population. And so we take the science and we make it practical for the consumer. That is a key aspect of being a registered dietitian, translating nutrition science into usable information for the public. That sets us apart from any other health professional out there. We have to have known the chemical makeup of all the foods. Uh, you have to know the physiology, how it is digested. And people really need someone who's knowledgeable in nutrition as an expert in nutrition to really help them find the way. If you visited your doctor and you just found out you have diabetes or you just found out you have high cholesterol. I see patients who have cardiovascular problems, patients who have GI, gastrointestinal problems, all kinds of patients. Consulting in RD will help you um, to come up with uh, recipes and meal plans. A registered dietitian really does have a strong science background. We have to. When I'm working with a patient maybe who's diabetic, I need to understand what scientifically is happening in the body. I need to understand the science of food, how it's broken down, digested and absorbed, and where it goes in the body. I deeply, deeply am amazed at the magic of food. I just, I can't believe that if you eat a healthy diet, that your skin is clearer, your nails and your hair grow faster, that you feel more energy all through the day, you prevent disease, you have a good healthy body weight. How could this be? How could what you eat do all of this magical stuff? So it intrigues me, it excites me, and it's something that I truly passionately believe. A registered dietitian takes into consideration the family genetics, what exactly is going on with that individual, and they will take all the science-based information use that knowledge and then translate it into a prescription that is individualized for that person, not a cookie cutter type of approach. It's a very special thing to be a registered dietitian. The most rewarding thing about being a dietitian is working with someone and knowing that when they walk out of the door. They have skills, they have practical tips that they will be able to use for the rest of their lives. Um, they'll be able to share that information with their family, their friends, um, and making sure that their children now are going to um, be better for the information that I've provided. Small steps are the key to lifelong health management. It's not just weight management, it's health management. If you need 2,000 calories a day and you eat 2,100, just that 100 calories extra a day, over a year, that's going to translate into a 10-pound weight gain every single year. It may be the difference in the long run to a lifelong rise in your, your body weight, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and weight management. So it really is the simple steps that oftentimes in the long run are going to get you the most bang for your buck. We all want to feel great, and how do you do it? You harness the information of food and nutrition that is science-based, and you get it from a registered dietitian. To find a dietitian in your area, you would contact www.eatright.org. It, it is about eating for life and eating for health and preventing diseases. www.eatright.org. www.eatright.org. You go to www.eatright.org www.eatright.org Comida que sepa rica <laughs> I measure success one delicious bite at a time. So I hope that gave you a little indication of, of how you, and also how you can promote yourself and what you do. Um, but I thought our dietitians did a good job. I'm always so proud when they, they uh, look like movie stars. <laughs> um, anyway, but thank you. And now uh, Ethan will join us on his presentation on uh, maternal, I believe, uh, nutrition. Correct, Ethan?